Today on Let's Talk Shop, we're talking about continuous surface mining. Joining me in the studio is Greg Van Rokel, Application Specialist, and Mike Sealover, Corporate Accounts Manager for our Specialty Excavation segment. Topics we'll be covering with you guys include continuous surface mining and the advantages it provides, their current issues with drill and blast, and how our global dealer network will work on your terms. You guys ready for this? Yes, I am. Sure. All right, let's dig in. Mike, why don't we start with you with the basic question. What is continuous surface mining and what makes it unique? Continuous surface mining uses mechanical excavation instead of high energy explosives that drill and blast uses. And where does the term continuous come from? Continuous is the operative word here. Continuous is 24-7 if needed. We've got uh, machines in bauxite mines running 8,000 hours a year, every year. Um, there's only 8,760 hours in a year. That means those machines are running 22 hours every day, day and night, rain and shine. That's continuous. That is continuous. Greg, Mike mentioned the predominant surface mining method is drill and blast. Can you walk us through some of the main issues that come with this mining method and why companies may be forced to find alternative ways of mining? Sure. Well, the main issue, if you're going to use, rely on a high energy explosive, obviously is going to be the fly rock issue that can come from that method. That is what a fly rock means is that's the uncontrolled piece that you didn't account for in an, in an explosive environment, where that could be anything as small as a baseball sized piece of rock flying through the air or larger, for example. And if that is uncontrolled in the air, you don't know where it's going to land. That could be a windshield of a vehicle through a person's house. There's also the issues of where in years past, Mines and quarries may not have been, you know, so close to town. They used to be, you know, say several miles outside of the city. Well, as society's grown, now instead of being far away, they're right outside the, the front gate of a lot of these mines and quarries. So with that, the extra challenges of, well, how are we going to be a good neighbor to these people now? Because the seismic vibrations that are caused from an explosive, for example, that could cause undue stress on a person's basement, which could lead to foundation cracking. Uh, there's also the, the noise and the uh, the dust cloud that can go through the air that can cause issues, filtration of people's homes and everything for the air conditioning. So there's many challenges that can be faced with, this, with the drill and blast method that are not necessarily something they have to be concerned of with using the continuous surface mining method. Can you talk a little bit about product dilution and how that becomes a problem? Sure. With product dilution, what that means is uh, you may only be going after a certain quality of ore in the ground, say for coal, for example. Coal a lot of times will lay in between various types of materials in the ground to where you only want the coal, you don't want the sandstone if it's in, mixed in, in between the material, for example. So when you do an, ex, an explosive blast, all those chemistries get mixed together. But to where using the, the continuous surface mining method, you can actually mine it layer by layer and precisely get down to those elements that you need to so you're not having product dilution. And if they're thinking of it that way, that releases more of a controlled product size to come out the end of the machine also, which makes it easier for handling on the back end of the process. Mike, did you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah, Greg just touched on it. You know, we talk about product size, and when you do drill and blast, you're really getting anything from dust to boulders the size of a pickup truck, and there's really no way to control it. So your blast face is all diluted when it comes down to the toe of that face, and you got dust to boulders. Well, product sizing is a huge benefit for continuous surface mining because it uses mechanical excavation. It's layer by layer, pass after pass, very consistent particle size, Typically, what we see is about nine inch minus with very few fines. So product dilution is solved with continuous surface mining. Uh, product sizing is better for the fact of the matter when you use continuous surface mining, you don't have to store, you don't have to handle, you don't have to conduct the blast with high energy explosives. Yeah, Mike, you make a very good point of that because this day and age, uh, with the way the world is, there is always that challenge of having to store and make sure those explosives are in a good safe spot because you don't want somebody to come into your property and steal those and you know, take them to somewhere where you don't want them to be used at. Right. This, this isn't a, a firecracker you're they're setting off, so that's kind of an important thing that you want to make sure to keep control of. No permitting necessary, no uh, specific person has to be there for, for doing the, the blasting because not everybody can just know how to set up a blast and cause it, something like that to happen. So to be able to control it in an environment with no permitting is, is huge in this day and age. Yeah, you brought up a good point, Greg, earlier about uh, urban encroachment. I mean, I don't care where you're at on this earth. There's more and more people. There's more bigger cities. Cities are expanding, certainly in aggregate business. Aggregates are located close to city centers because of transportation costs. Right. So you're using the aggregate for asphalt, concrete, building materials. So you always have urban encroachment. And people are asking the important question, what else is there? 
What can be done? Is there an alternative to drill and blast? How can I be a better neighbor? Continuous surface mining is being that better neighbor. We're not conducting the blasting, therefore the vibration, the dust cloud, and the blast doesn't exist. Absolutely. And, and what are those benefits then for the customer as well? Well, the customer typically, so smaller quarries um, in particular that I have visited, typically kind of outsource the drilling operation. They outsource the uh, boulder reduction. Sometimes they even outsort the primary crushing and certainly the blasting um, and loading the charge. They are able to use more of their own employee labor by using continuous service mining because you have one person in an operating seat versus all these subcontractors doing their job. So the benefit is more productive work environment with fewer people involved and their direct employees and being a better neighbor. Now, Greg, can you tell me, is there ever an instance though when drill and blast and mining can work on the same job site? Yes, absolutely there is. With the limitations of a mechanical machine that we are gonna use for our, for our continuous surface miners, there is limits to the material that they can cut. I mean, there's always gonna be a material out there that is just too hard because with our machine, you're limited by the carbide tooth that's in the drum to cut the material. If the material is stronger than the carbide of that tooth, then you're just gonna sit there and not accomplish anything. So there could come a time to where maybe granite, for example, which is a very, very hard material to cut. So there could be a time where they may have to come in and use explosives maybe to pre-stress the rock to allow us to, to cut it, or they may just have to use explosives all in general because we do have that limiting factor of our machine. So, but yes, there are times, unfortunately, where we do have to work side by side. Right. Yeah, I've also seen examples where there's large mines that use a different method of surface mining um, for their extraction. However, continuous surface miners are used to improve the haul roads. You know, one of the biggest costs for a mining operation is tires and transmissions. Well, to use a secondary operation, which most mine sites do, a lot of potholes and craters reoccur with weather and the truck traffic. With continuous surface mining, you're cutting mechanically into the ore body, so you're creating that road with the right pitch, the right slope, with berms if you'd like, one time in the ore body. Therefore, eliminating tire damage and transmission damage. So it can coexist at a mine site even if it isn't the predominant uh, mining method. And that makes me think of the example of you used the, the haul road maintenance mic. There was a a coal mine application that we had where uh, the specific use of the surface mine, the continuous surface mining method was for haul road maintenance to where they took those potholes out of the road and the crate and the craters that were caused by these heavy, you know, several hundred ton haul trucks going up and down these roads to where they were able to increase the speed of each one of those trucks by two kilometers an hour. You may not think that's much, but when there's several hundred of these trucks running around, each one of them can increase their speed by two kilometers or more. That's more cycle times from the, from the, from the pit to the to the crusher each day for those trucks, so it definitely increased the overall end of the day tonnage that that, that uh, site was producing. Yeah, and I can think of one more example where they may coexist. You know, if you're starting a new mine, a new quarry, and there's an enormous amount of ore burden on top, and that's not the ore you're looking for, well, get it off as fast as low a cost as you possibly can. Maybe drill and blast is the answer. But then when you get down to that precious ore body where the high margins at. Use a more precision, more precise, more controlled way of mining it without product dilution, with controlled product sizing, and that's when continuous surface mining is the right answer. All right, now I know I'm sitting here with the experts, so both don't answer at the same time. <laughs> Mike, we're going to start with you. Let's talk about some of the advantages of continuous surface mining. Yeah, the biggest advantage is not ha handling high energy explosives and no blasting permit. Right. The fact of the matter, you can actually mine day and night, rain and shine is another one. Um, certainly being a better neighbor, not producing that dust cloud. There's a lot of information out there, a lot of regulations, and a lot of government agencies being engaged right now about silicosis and dust in the air and dust on the job site. Now we've got a three-prong attack to help try and mitigate that. First one is eliminate the blast and that big dust cloud. That's the very first thing. That dust cloud's a problem. It actually drifts with the wind into the subdivision, into the business park, whatever is next to that quarry. So that's the first step to help mitigate it is not to have it in the first place. The second one is uh, we actually have a vacuum dust suppression system available on our units and it actually works very effective being that better neighbor again. And the third way to help mitigate that exposure for the operator is we have a pressurized cab. We have heat and air conditioning cab but pressurized. And a radio. And a radio. <laughs> yeah, a real nice radio. Now, as a marketer, I my favorite part of the uh, mine sites are the photos that come out of it. So we got to talk about the stable pit walls. 
because uh, I think those are absolutely gorgeous that we create. So can you talk about the stable pit walls, Greg? Absolutely. What the stable pit wall allows to do is by using our mechanical you know, advantage to be able to cut that nice stable high wall, you don't have jagged, jagged edges coming out. With our methodology, we can get to anywhere from 80 to 90 degree high wall, depending upon which method you use of our, of our machines. And that just allows for a nice stable, picturesque, perfect wall if you have it, as, <laughs> as you said, for your marketing terms. Yeah, and in combination of that 80 degree on some of our models and 90 degree on others, uh, we can actually cut square corners. So this is all about maximum material extraction for a quarry site. So if you think about it, inside and an outside square corner with a very high vertical wall because we're not putting that micro fractures into the rock structure that drone blast does, we have the opportunity to maximize extraction for a given mine site. And that also helps us in, in the, to where we're, we're talking about uh, the, the mining and quarry operation. You also aspect a lot of our machines are using site preparation work to where I know there's job sites where they've used our machines to dig basements for, for large scale hotels and metropolitan areas or underground parking garages because they're using the fact where they're, they're mitigated with the dust issue, they're not having to use explosive, and be able to do those you know, 80 to 90 degree corners where they can maximize to be able to get the full ground of the underground structure they're building. So that is a very big benefit in the not only the mine site issue where they're concerned about it using every material advantage possible to get the material out of the ground, we're using our service mining method to more precisely cut that basement into the, into the housing development, so to speak. Yeah, Greg, that reminds me of a, a job site um, that I'm familiar with. I think it was in Malta, I think. It was, what, oh, where yes. was that? Remember that one? Yes, I remember that one. Yeah, actually, it was actually in the city center. They were putting a new apartment complex in amongst all the rest of the buildings. Certainly, blasting was out. Dust was out. Um, product size was a challenge because you had to get it out in small trucks between the normal city streets. Mm -hmm. So continuous surface mining was perfect application. So they brought in our equipment got in there, actually went down in the bedrock, able to make a parking garage underneath the new parking structure, um, on top of the parking structure when the new uh, apartment complex. All while their other buildings around it were still in operation, no one had to be evacuated. So the combination of small product size, low dust, uh, no blasting makes it perfect for an urban environment. I mean, how cool is it to have a machine that's designed for everyday full production mining, cutting hard rock, you put GPS control or laser on it, and now you can use it for civil engineering jobs. And now you're getting down into the really sub-centimeter accuracy if you're under the GPS. The machine's being steered by GPS. It's controlling the cut depth. Uh, if, if, the, if the model you're using has a tilting head on it, now it's controlling the grade for water drainage and everything. So the technology that this produces is mind-boggling that if it's used in the right application. Yeah, let's talk more about the technology used in surface mining. Oh boy, that's a that's a big topic to get into there because as Mike mentioned, you know, for one, operator comfort's a big one. So we 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 focus a lot on making sure the operator's comfort with a, with an air ride cab, uh, an active suspension seat, so he's not having the vibration going through his body. Because imagine as you're cutting through hard rock, that machine's getting bounced around quite a bit. Well, the operator doesn't really feel it as bad because he's riding on air, for lack of a better term. Uh, with the GPS system that can be incorporated in our machines, whether it's your your top cons, your Trimble, your Lycas, all we can, all the major manufacturers can be hooked into our machines in one, shape, one, one way, shape, or form. And with the engineering design plans that get, get loaded into the GPS system, it can cut to grade to get that final amount of material you want out of there. Uh, the dust system was a huge, you know, technological piece we've added to the machine because that is a huge problem that we're facing in the industry of silicosis. Both MSHA and OSHA are, you know, ticketing, citating quarries and mines and civil applications, you know, all over the place now because they don't they want to reduce that risk of, of, of silicosis exposure. Yeah, it's really exciting. One of the things I like most to speak of is something you touched on earlier, Greg, a sub-centimeter accuracy. That's a half inch, slight less than that. Think about equipping a machine that's designed to cut hard rock that attacks the ore body layer by layer with sub-centimeter accuracy. We have something called auto steer. Only when he has to turn the machine around at the end does he actually have to turn the machine around. Once he gets back on the, plat, the path, flip the switch, it takes over auto steer. That's the real cool stuff. So if you can draw a mine plan in three dimensions, you have a GPS controlled machine, and you have auto steer, you're taking advantage of all the latest technology out there. So we've talked a lot about the differences between continuous surface mining and drill and blast. Mm -hmm. Greg, can you compare the two? Absolutely. Think about, uh, we'll start out with our method of continuous surface mining. It's a very simple 
uh, small operation. You have the miner going, your, your, your service miner going, and you have a loader to push the material out of the way to pile it and load it on the truck. To where with the drill and blast method, now you have to have somebody come in with a drill to drill the hole. You have to have another person come in, put the explosives in the hole. Then you have to have the person that actually does the blast and depending upon what size of material you have, you have a loader that's going to load the material into a truck. That truck's going to take it to a crusher to get it to, to, its, to a better manageable size. And a lot of times, that's just more steps in the process compared to what we have. So from the crusher, then it may have to go to a secondary crusher, may have to go to a third crusher. It's just going to vary to ours. We're, we're almost a one, a one pass method where we're, we're cutting and crushing at the same time, coming in with the loader, loading it onto a truck, and away we go. I think it's important to, to note that with our consistent small particle size, it has better spatial density. Like that example I gave about Malta, yes. you can use smaller trucks and smaller loaders if you like because of the spatial density. This allows over the, the use of over the road trucks, which are much more readily available, cheaper to maintain, um, gives you a lot more options in that way. A lot of times if you go from mine to a port, it's in transportation mode anyway, so you can directly load it on over the road trucks if you choose. That's, that's a very good point. There's two more things I think we need to touch on in, fair, uh, in fairness to continuous surface mining versus drilling and blasting, and that's selective mining and selective loading. Two things that you can do with continuous surface mining that you can't do with drilling and blasting. So let's talk about selective mining. We mentioned about GPS control and how you can draw your mine plan in three dimensions mm -hmm. with software. Well, you can do that. When you actually do your mine plan, you can actually put in the pit sumps, the ramps, the roads, um, water features. You can tilt the, the mine floor to the handle or to move the water where you'd like to go, all while you're extracting valuable ore. But with that technology, if you understand your geology through core sampling and know where the vein of the highest quality ore is and just want to attack that alone, well, you can draw a mine plan and go right after that, whether it's in the ground horizontally or vertically. We call that follow the seam. Selective mining is another term for it. Now, selective loading is something you can do visually. We've got a really cool example of in gypsum. You know, gypsum's a sed sedimentary rock. Uh, it's obviously very white in color, used in uh, drywall, most people yes. know. But it's also used in food and cosmetics. Um, but because of that sedimentary rock, often you'll find in the face or the wall or in the layers of gypsum, there will be actually clay deposits and other unwanted materials. And gypsum's very commonly sold on purity. So it's higher margin, the more pure it is. But with continuous surface mining, when you're attacking that layer by layer, you can actually see everything that's perfect gypsum because it's all white, all homogeneous. Then all of a sudden there'll be this brown streak in your pit floor, which is the waste seam. That's what they don't want. They don't want it. So when you blast, you're forced to deal with it because it all gets mixed together in product dilution. Well, with continuous surface mining, you push it out of the way. So you've automatically found a visual way to do what we call selective loading. Just load the material you want. Get rid of that waste stream. You actually appreciate a higher margin and it's easier to separate it Whereas in drill and blast as an alternative, you could not do that. That's a very good point, Mike. That brings up a, a, a good uh, kind of job story of uh, one of our initial early successes of, with using the continuous service mining method where we had multiple machines in an iron ore application to where they were able to use the technology that the mines had at their disposal to understand their geology and how the material laid in the ground. They would come in with our machines, cut a nice perfectly smooth flat floor. Uh, the, each loader or dozer or whatever they're using to push a material had a GPS display in its cab so it knew whether that material they're pushing was going to get loaded to go off to a waste material or if it was going to get loaded and go somewhere else throughout the, throughout the process. So it was a very easy controlled method, very seamless operation and took advantage of the continuous service mining technology that we offered as well as the, the technology that the mining company had at hand too because it knew and with a nice smooth flat floor was less wear and tear on the on the equipment that was needed as well between the loaders and dump trucks and everything. So, yeah, Greg, I think I remember that example. I think one of the big successes of that um, project was the fact that they wanted to get revenue in earlier, mm, yeah. long before the yes. mine plan was able to install the primary crusher. Yep. So we were able to step in there and give them some equipment. They put an operator in the cab, have a front end loader, and they're mining. And with their understanding of the geology. Um, they were able to use selective loading to their advantage and have a higher margin product. Correct. They were able to get to the they were able to get the material to market faster while their primary crusher was being 
set up too. So it was a, it was a win-win scenario for everybody in that instance. Yeah, you mentioned primary crusher. You know, one of the things that uh, is needs to be said is depending on the mine and what um, operations are downstream. You know, we consistently produce nine inch minus with very mm -hmm. few fines. Sometimes primary crusher is not needed at all. Sometimes you can skip that step entirely. I know a few examples that I've been at where they were making an actually cement in a limestone quarry. They were taking it off the floor right to the processing plant. They didn't have to crush it or resize it. The plant could handle it. Mm -hmm. So that's a big win as well. Very, that's, and it definitely allows them to have, uh, to get everything out there a lot faster and a lot easier process, a lot more people and less people involved in the process. So definitely a big advantage. These are great examples, but before the surface miner actually goes into the field, we have a rock lab here in Pella. Can you guys talk about the process of before the sale happens, how our rock lab helps our customers? Yeah, this, this is what really sets us apart. And this is really the exciting part of our business model here at Vermeer, is we have a worldwide dealer network that we believe in local service, local parts, uh, local sales, um, their relationship, being part of their business solution. Um, that's one way that our potential customer can engage with Vermeer immediately. Uh, go to our website, vermeer.com, find a local dealer, go talk to them. You mentioned Rock Lab. You know, we're really excited to be able to have this type of facility here on the Vermeer Mile. We invested in it heavily to answer those questions from our customers and our dealers across the world. You know, can we cut this? You now, we use this rock lab for our track mounted trenchers as well as our surface miners and our directional drills. All rock's not the same. Limestone's not limestone. But with our rock lab here on the mile, we can take a rock sample, core it, do all the standard tests, tell you with confidence what it is, and we do that free of charge. We'll give you a rock test report, give you the UCS, the indirect tension, the Shershire abrasivity, we have an energy test. Um, and then we actually roll it into a Vermeer solutions calculator for continuous surface mining. And that gives you all the pre-feasibility information that someone would need in comparing and contrasting whether to use continuous surface mining as an alternative to drill and blast. And the nice thing about that tool, Mike, is it's based on real world results that we've encountered in the past during various demonstrations or uh, machine sales to customer where we track their data. So it's data that we can be trusted and it's totally be able to be manipulated by the user to enter in their customer's fuel, fuel price, for example, how much do they pay their operator. So all those factors can be added into that tool to give you a very good overall estimate of cost of operation to own that machine. You know, we base it out over however, you know, whether the customer wants to own it for 5,000 hours or 100,000 hours, we can manipulate that tool to give them the data they want. Yeah, Maggie, it's that simple. Basically, if uh, someone has a question, well, I wonder what else is there? Well, there is something else besides drilling and blasting. It's called continuous surface mining. And all they need to do is find a local dealer, give them a big rock, and we'll <laughs> do the rest. That's the best way to start with us. It's the easiest way to be partners in business for a long time. Sounds expensive. How much does that cost? It's free charge. Free charge. Free charge. Free charge. Yeah. We believe, believe it or not. <laughs> believe it or not. We do not charge because for we that service. We want to be partners in their business. We certainly do not want to mislead anybody about our production estimates or cost of ownership. We'll let math and science do the talking for us. So you send a big chunk of rock in, and we basically match up the best machine for your job. Exactly. Mike, as you mentioned, dealers, and Vermeer has over 600 industrial and forge dealers around the world, ensuring our customers receive a consistent, personalized experience, all leading back to providing the parts and equipment to keep your yellow iron working productively. Um, Greg, can you talk about the benefits of Vermeer's global dealer network? Absolutely. What makes us different than a lot of our, the competition out there is, in fact, our, our dealer network. Whether they're, they're located around the world, uh, you can go to our website, vermeer.com, type in your zip code or your country, wherever you're at. It'll tell you where your closest dealer is. They will help you in the servicing of the equipment, the parts of the equipment, the sales aspect of it. And putting a local face to get you the support you need is absolutely critical. And that's what I've, I personally believe stands us apart from a lot of our competitors because we make it very, try to make it as seamless and very friendly of a pos process as possible to get you the equipment you need to get your job done. And they can also give you service plans for the machine potentially so those service packages can really you know, set, set us apart by them being able to provide you the oil filters you need to do your oil change at 500 hours wherever range they decide they want to do it at or the manual suggests to do it at. That is a very huge factor and our dealers do very great at it. We do love our dealers. Well Greg you talked a little bit about our global dealer network and they're located in some of the forest reaches of the world. Uh, been in the Congo, certainly in South Africa, uh, Amazon rainforest. Yeah that was a fun one. 
So the service packages you're talking about uh, are really important, but more important than that is oftentimes they have a list of key components and parts to stock. When you're that far remote or unplanned maintenance or something unique happened to your machine, it's nice to count on a Vermeer dealer to have those parts needed for that machine in that far to reach territory in stock already. Because a lot of times the some of those parts aren't as easy where you can't go down to a local auto parts store for one because there may not be one and two it's a very specialized component that very few people can get their hands on and so having that local support is is crucial. Our global dealers are really a partner in our customers business they really are they basically take to heart what's critical to them stock the parts necessary give them service packages if they desire in order for them to take the worry and stress about the equipment worry about mining. Absolutely. We'd like to thank you for joining us today on this edition of Let's Talk Shop. If you have any questions on continuous surface mining, our Vermeer Rock Lab, or anything else you learned about today, please visit vermeer.com or reach out to your local dealer.